My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself for everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me, first of all. I'm very appreciative of this opportunity. So my name's Alana, and I am a psychic, clairvoyant, medium, also a Reiki healer, life coach, who is 27 years young, and I'm tuning in from Montreal. Awesome. So let's dive into it. What, what type of an individual can call themselves the medium? What is it? And, and then I want to get into the reading part of it. Right, absolutely. So I would start by saying that there are various types of individuals who can tap into intuitive ability, and I believe that we are all capable of doing that. Some individuals simply develop it to more of a heightened extent. Um, so a medium individual is someone who can connect with individuals who've crossed over. Clairvoyance is something that I tend to do a little bit more of, although I do both. Clairvoyance is ultimately receiving visions. Clairsentience is kind of feeling sensations or emotions of the individual that is in front of you, whereby you can connect to a divine source or energy so that you can ultimately provide clarity for the individual in front of you. And I would go as far as to say it can be very obvious when you are this type of individual because you can ultimately meet an individual that you know nothing about yet have a message to portray or something to tell the individual that is a valuable infor piece of information or source that allows them to receive closure, clarity, um, confirmation of what's happening within their lives. It's honestly an enlightening and beautiful experience. Awesome. I was about to say that, you know, I don't know, somehow my mom and my wife are definitely good mediums because they know everything I'm going to do <laughs> two, three years down the line. So you definitely need to partner up with them for sure because I don't know where they get it, how they do it, especially my mom. She can, I don't know, I can never lie to her. I don't know if she sees it. <laughs> I don't know. She can, and I'm talking about over the phone. She's like, you're lying. I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, you're lying. I know it. And I'm like, how do you know that? And I'm talking about stupid stuff, you know? She calls me. She's a mom. She goes, have you had food? Do you want to stop over? So I, you know, give you some. I'm like, no, I ate because I don't want to bother her. I don't want to go over there and do all that stuff, right? And then she's like, you're lying. I know you haven't ate. I'm like, how does she know that on the phone? You know, it's like one of those things. Anyway, so here's my question for you. What would be the next step for individuals to get clarity? Because I feel like as entrepreneurs, business owners, as individuals that are providing services, the more clarity you have for yourself, the better you'll be able to serve your clients. So what is the next step beyond that? Absolutely. So I would say there's multiple steps. And I think that it's very individualized and everyone needs to find what ultimately works for them. But I would go as far as to say um, the number one thing that every individual needs to know and needs to be capable of is tuning into their personal energy, divine source and intuition, because that will never lead you astray. Right, because our entire experience on this planet is ultimately determined by how we choose to perceive our reality. So I would go as far as to say with regards to business, entrepreneurs, or anyone who has a goal or objective or a burning desire to attain um, you know, this, this level of reality or life of which they perceive to be successful. Um, I think that what's super important ultimately is that we can trust ourselves and we can trust ourselves by becoming in tune. But there are multiple ways to do that. And I always speak about vibrational frequencies and energy. If you wish to understand success, if you wish to understand the laws of the universe, you have to tune into vibrational frequency. And there are many ways to do that. And um, vibrational frequency, by that I mean the thoughts and the images and the feelings and emotions that we withhold on a daily basis, because that is emitting a vibrational frequency to the universe, which ultimately draws the parallels back to us. So if you are in a mindset of fear, if you are in a mindset of lack, if you are in a mindset of loss, um, or rejection, regardless of the negative emotion, you are ultimately attracting more of that to you. But as soon as you tap into a vibrational frequency of example, gratitude, right away, you are uplifting this frequency whereby you can ultimately attract more of that to you. So gratitude, I would say is super important. The tips and valuable advice that I will give you today is definitely more from a spiritual standpoint. And it's something that has worked for myself and my clientele. I would say that your mindset 
the, the, the images you're holding in your mind is what's most important and what it is that you desire and whether or not you think you're capable of achieving that. Because whatever you believe is ultimately true. We all have different ways through which we perceive our realities. And as a life coach, um, one of the things that I need to do within my readings as well, which is associated with my medium work, is to be able to provide different um, interpretations for the reality of the individual in front of me so that they can kind of grasp more of a positive mindset with regards to wherever they are. Because the beauty is no matter where you're reached, all you need to do is simply shift your perception and your mindset in order to attract a better future. So here's my other question for you. You said raise your vibration, obviously gratitude. So in order for me to raise my vibration, and, and, I'm, and I'm trying to think, when we say raise your vibration, are we talking about the number of frequency raise up? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit more research on that, and then maybe we'll do another session and ask, because I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the frequency. Are we talking about the number of the frequency on the wavelength on a graph? Or are we talking about just, in general, we want to go from a lower frequency because we're assuming that lower frequency is things that we don't want. So now we're raising our frequency. I need to be a little bit more careful how I choose the vocabulary and give interpretation of what the vocabulary means. So here's my question. You said gratitude. If I start thinking about gratitude, I start being thankful for what I already have, and I start thinking about the things that I, I'm going to have in abundance, not the things I don't have. What's the next step? Because that to me is like thinking positive mental activity, right? You have that mental activity. But that mental activity, is that enough for you to be on the right path to success? Is that going to get you there? That would be the first step. But then, of course, there's action that needs to be put behind that positive mindset, right? Because I can be thinking as positive as I want to be, but just sitting on the couch not doing anything at the same time, right? So of course there is an action that needs to be put behind that gratitude and that faith. And by faith, I mean having the audacity to believe in the not yet seen, right? So, but the action that you need to put behind it is what's super important as well. And of course there's so many tips or tricks. And I mean, one of them that would be super important as well is to um, be cautious of the individuals that you surround yourself with as well. It's important to surround yourself with like-minded individuals who are constantly striving to learn, grow, and evolve because um, energy is very contagious. So going back to what you said with regards to energy and frequencies, to simplify it, I would say um, your frequency would be the energy that you are projecting according to um, the beliefs that you hold at that point in time, according to your desires, according to what you think about yourself and your life circumstances. But definitely there needs to be an action put behind it. And I would go as far as to say in my case, it's really interesting because every time I do have clientele who asks me about, you know, taking action or whatnot, I find it so interesting because I would allow myself to be guided by that intuition. Mm -hmm. And when I felt as though there was a positive opportunity, I would take action because the universe likes speed. The universe doesn't like when we sit back and ponder and have self-doubt or, or neglect our responsibilities. The universe likes speed. I would also say your daily habits are so important your daily habits. So for example, um, getting up in the morning early, meditating, physical activity, um, eating fresh foods, just your daily habits are so important. And if you can gain awareness on the habits that are not so great, that are not providing you with the outcome that you desire along your journey, it's important to be able to catch yourself in those bad habits so that you can consciously change them. How much responsibility and accountability has to do with this because if we want to change our mindset we want to change our habits all of these things i mean we talk about them but to me it's like statistically looking at it i see so many people reading books being you know part of seminars motivation or whatever you want to call it right all of this self-development content we're around that my question is why we don't have more people being successful Right. You see what I'm saying? It's like there is something that's missing, the accountability, responsibility. So now I believe that we're on the right path. I think it's way better than what it was 10, 15, 20 years ago based on my personal opinion and what I see. And what I see could be possibly wrong. I could be within my own bubble and my surrounding might just be like that. But I feel like 
if individuals are reading and going through all these things, why we don't have why we don't have a better world? That's what I'm thinking. Right. Well, the best thing that you can do to improve your world is to improve yourself firsthand. I would say, look, I know a lot of individuals who are super passionate about, you know, being positive and gathering information and acquiring knowledge and putting themselves out there for success. But until you've internalized it and applied it to your life, it's not something that's going to work. But something else that's super important is to work smarter than hard. I know a lot of individuals who are working really hard, but turning in circles. You have to work smart. And I know this because I actually take this from my previous figure skating career when I was a national figure skater. And I had a lot of injuries and I worked, I, I trained maybe one quarter of the time of the other athletes, but I always still performed. And it's because I realized quality over quantity is a very significant aspect. And that just working smart and knowing what it is that you need to do when will be life changing. Because there's so many people who are working consecutive hours and constantly, and they're still not necessarily applying um, you know, the, the knowledge or the habits to their life that they need to. So I think what we need to do is kind of pull ourselves, you know, out of this standpoint and kind of really analyze our lives and what it is that we need to do specifically in order to move forward. And I know that that might sound a little bit vague, but kind of prioritizing and really working smart instead of just working aimlessly is super important. It's like when I was in university going for a final exam, it's important. It's, it's like important to study well because it's impossible to memorize the whole textbook of 6,000 pages. So you have to highlight what's important and memorize that only. And that kind of taught me that that's also how life works. Love it. So how do people find you? How do people find me? What? Yeah. How do they can reach you out? Um, my contacts reach me through either Instagram, my Facebook page, because I have all of my reviews. I have hundreds of reviews there. Um, via cell phone, email, they kind of just reach me any way, shape or form. Love it. Listen, um, I'm going to research a little bit more about frequency myself because I feel like I have done the research, but I don't trust the research that I've done because I've done it in partial segments. And I feel like it's a very, I have a lot of respect for it because if I do find the secret within it, it could help me a lot. So I kind of need to set aside some specific time that I got to put on my schedule that I need to sit down and do it. And I think it's a vast subject. So I need to take notes on what I learned, especially on that topic, because I've done it a few times. And every time I do it, I come back and I'm like, okay, I got a bunch of information, but it's missing gaps. So I can't link it all together. And I think that's just the way I studied it. I think it's my fault. I need to do a better job at it. So once I do that, you and I are going to have another session and we're going to go at it i'll probably find out what, what i made mistakes on and then go back again we do it so I, i'm not upset at the, how much time is going to take because it's a process so i, I know through the process will be okay absolutely because there's no timetable no one is really early or late we are all exactly where we are supposed to be at this point in time right i have a lot of clients who will tell me oh i'm reached you know a certain age why don't i have X, Y, and Z, you know, like whether it's the marriage, whether it's, you know, the business, whether it's the health, whatnot. I think it's about understanding that comparison is not the best thing either, right? So wherever you're reached along your journey is ultimately where you are supposed to be. Because the physical realm, we ultimately come down and our body is our envelope. The universe is here so that we can learn, grow and evolve. It's just a school. And once we're done, we graduate, we go back home, right? So wherever you are reached right now is where you are supposed to be according to your evolution and what lessons your soul chose in order to learn and retract um, the knowledge that you needed within this lifetime. Yeah, my GPA so far at the school of uh, life is very low. So I need to improve that. <laughs> So I hope nobody's grading it. I hope nobody's grading it. If you're out there, don't be grading mine. It's very low. So we need to bring that on lesson with you. <laughs> listen, thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule being with us. Hopefully we'll be able to do more videos. Of course. You're so welcome. It was a pleasure. And I thank you again for having me. You got it. Talk to you soon. <laughs>